Hey everyone, how's it going? Elliot here again. In today's video, we are finally going to be putting some games on the Clockwork Game Shell. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to do one more video on this, and that's going to be installing um, emulators onto the Game Shell. I don't have the uh, tools to be doing that at the moment, but I'm going to be showing you a very, very simple way to install games onto your Clockwork Game Shell using your phone. So the whole process is only going to take a couple of minutes, and uh, yeah, without any further ado, let's get into it. So it is finally time then to put some games onto the actual Clockwork Game Show, and I'm really excited to finally show you how to do this. Um, I should also mention um, that Clockwork have actually sponsored this video, so a big thank you to them for making this video possible. Um, so yeah, basically what you're going to need to do is download an app called ES File Explorer. Now. I'm pretty certain this is going to be exactly the same for iOS, but I will leave the written tutorials in the description if you want to find out how to do this. But um, ideally, you're going to want to do this on Android because it's easier to download ROMs online using your Android. Um, there's also ways you can obviously do this on a computer, but I just wanted to show you the phone method because it's kind of the most portable and convenient method. So make sure you're connected to the same Wi-Fi as on your phone, and then you're going to be able to see the Clockwork Pi pop up in your network on ES File Explorer, which you access on the side just by clicking on a menu. So you're going to see three folders. You've got music. Um, I've put a, a little uh, track in there just to test it. It does work. It's kind of cool, but not really the most convenient thing to do. And then you have your um, different emulators already pre-installed on here. When you add more emulators on here, you'll see more files showing up. So we're going to go ahead and put some Game Boy games on here. As you can see, I've already done that. So what you're going to need to do is go over to local, which is on the side, and then you're going to go into download, which is where all my downloads are, and then find your ROMs. So mine is up here, and what I'm going to do is add Pokemon Red, although it's already on there, I'm just going to show you how to do it. So you select the ROM, you click copy, and then if you go up to the top, you can actually scroll across to where your um, LAN folder is from the clockwork uh, game show which is the folder we were just in before and then you can click paste and um, obviously this is an overwrite thing but I'm just going to uh, re I'm just going to overwrite it and uh, put that in there and then the ROM will just download and it is that simple then what you can do is go back onto your clockwork game show you're going to need to do a quick restart which isn't too hard to do just click reload uh, UI so now we can go ahead and play our Pokemon Red ROM, which is quite exciting because we've put this whole thing together and we finally want to play some ROMs on it, and now we can do that. So the sound on this, um, you turn that up and down by pressing Shift and then Volume, and uh, there is a little bit of a delay sometimes between that recognizing, but... And there we are. We're now walking around in Pokemon Red on our Clockwork Game Show, and how easy was that to install? And if you don't want to play Pokemon Red and you want to play Pokemon Yellow, then you can do that quite easily as well. There isn't any lag or latency that I've experienced so far, and the buttons feel absolutely great. Um, you just got to make sure that when you put these buttons in, that you're um, cleaning up the sides from where they came out of the, um, the mold type thing. So yeah, just be really, really careful because otherwise you might get a little bit of kind of stickiness and you don't want that, of course. So yeah, everything plays absolutely great. Looks great, sounds great, which is all um, a good thing to hear and see. So of course, if you want to save it, then you can press start, save, oh, wrong one, save, and this thing obviously fully supports save files and everything. I'll just show you that now. Okay, so I've just come out of the game and I've gone straight back into it then just to show you that the save file does actually work. Um, obviously, that's quite an important thing when playing an emulator that you want the save files to um completely work but there we go we're back exactly where we started so the save files are absolutely fine I haven't had any issues with those in the past so the last thing I want to show you on the clockwork game show in this video before we add some emulators on here in the next video is playing Game Boy Advance games now you can obviously play um, NES ROMs and stuff like that and I've installed a couple of those on here and it's exactly the same as the, uh, the method that I just showed you obviously you just need to be installing a different ROM um, I would only install ROMs of games that you own because there is a little bit of kind of um, controversy around installing games that you don't own. 
that the creators aren't getting any kind of commission from any of this, but it's difficult to uh, pick up these games these days because they're so expensive. So there you go, NES works absolutely perfectly, or NES, and uh, yeah, it's brilliant. That obviously means you can also play Famicom titles, and uh, yeah. So let's go back to the menu and have a look at our Game Boy Advance game. Now, a quick note is that there isn't any LNR triggers built into this, so if you want to play this, we are going to actually have to assemble the little um, LNR Lego piece that goes on the back, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So here is our Game Boy Advance uh, ROM now playing. You can see it's adjusted the resolution of the screen to uh, playing it in its native ratio. So there we go, we've got our save file all good. And yeah, this works absolutely brilliantly and I haven't experienced any lag yet or anything like that. Yeah, as you can see, it looks great. Absolutely fantastic. The, um, the colors are actually all perfectly normal as well. They look a little bit washed out, but that's because I have some really, really bright lights firing on my camera. But yeah, absolutely excellent and work with no problems at all. But we are gonna want to use our LNR triggers. So let's go ahead and install them onto the Clockwork Game Shell. So now it is time to add the LNR triggers onto the back of the Clockwork Game Shell to be able to cater for different emulators, um, such as the Game Boy. So this is the other piece that it comes with to put on the back. It's got Lego brick connectors on here, so if you wanted to try and add some bits on to make this thing more ergonomical, then feel free to give that a bash. I'm not sure if that's gonna work. But yeah, let's put the uh, the new, oh God, that's is that stuck on there now? So let's put the uh, little PCB together. I've already assembled the um, little clamshell here. One thing to note is that when you um, take this button out of the um, mold that it's in, you really need to make sure that you're trimming down these little pieces because otherwise it will stick and then your buttons won't press down properly. And that is the same uh, for all of the buttons in the Clockwork Game Show. If your buttons are kind of sticky, then just take it apart again and make sure that there are no bits of plastic um, sticking up. So then we can slot that into the back like so, not too difficult. And a little bit fiddly maybe, but surely we are all capable of this. Am I being defeated here? I think I am. No, no, yep, we're in. Okay, brilliant. And then you've got a little connector at the bottom. Obviously that means that that needs to point out and close the whole thing up. And there we go. Nice clicky little board there. So now it's time to disassemble this. Now a lot of people in the comments of my last video were saying that they weren't overly fond of these little wheels which stick out. And I'm not entirely sure. I think it's definitely unique and we're not used to seeing something sticking out of the uh, the device like that. And without it, maybe we'd look a bit more slimline. But I definitely rate the, uh, the design. I think it's really, really cool that they've done something unique like that which we're not used to seeing before. So now that we have taken the insides out, what we're gonna to need to do is connect this board using this cable onto here. So what I recommend you do is actually just unplug this board and set that aside. Open this up just like that. Some of the buttons are gonna fall off, other ones will stay there. And take out the PCB. Now what we're gonna to need to do is attach the ribbon cable into this centerpiece. Now, you will notice that on my one, I've still got some little bits of plastic sticking out from where it was attached to the, uh, the little mold piece. So, so here is a knife. This is probably not the best way of doing this, but oh my goodness, that was scary. But yeah, actually that's doing it quite okay. Excellent, okay, this is all going smoothly. Okay, so we've put the motherboard back in and we've got the membranes all nice and closed in there. We can now close the whole thing up. D-pad can go back on, and we need to attach this little cable in here. So this can only go on one way, and it looks like it's this way. Push that in all the way down. Maybe get something just to give it a little uh, prod in there and connect that back up. And this little cable is gonna need to come out of here and we pop the whole thing back in and this this uh, in the inside is exactly the same as the other one it's just obviously got those two holes in it and the Lego bricks so we slide that down and our speaker goes back in and we can now slide the top bit back on and just like that we've actually added the um, buttons on the back which is 
just showing how simple this is and how good the design is that we can do this so quickly and at any stage change it out for um, you know a slightly smoother shell. So now we plug in the uh, back piece and that's it. There we go, you've got these dangling off. I'm just joking. So these go on now next. There we go, lovely. Okay, so there are our L and R triggers on the back there. So we've actually got quite a few different ones and I've got to remember they're all programmable as well. And that's not too uncomfortable actually. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this thing back on then now that we've got our um, buttons installed on the back. I'm not sure what the automatic mapping is. Um, hopefully we're gonna get these two. It makes the most sense to me. So we'll go into here and there's Super Mario Advance. That is interesting. Okay, so this one's a turbo button. There's our regular um, trigger there, our regular left trigger. And then we've got our right trigger here. And then obviously this is probably a turbo button as well, but there'll be no need for that in this game. That is very interesting. Okay, so just like that then, we've installed our L and R buttons on the back in order to play our Game Boy Advance games and other games as well, which will need more um, buttons added to it. So that is absolutely brilliant. And it doesn't look too bad. You can obviously tuck that um, cable inside as well make the whole thing a little bit neater. In fact, I'd go as far as to say you could probably tuck it in under there and then um, that whole thing will have a really, really small footprint and not stick out at all. That's probably the best way to have done it, to be honest with you. But yeah, I really hope you guys have enjoyed this second video. Thanks again to Clockwork for um, sponsoring this video. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like. If you haven't picked one of these up yet, I'll leave the links in the description and I will catch you in the next video. Peace.